All right, so we're going to be talking about um, depth. A few weeks ago, we talked about depth in kind of a general way. We talked about four or five different types of depth. And tonight, we're going to talk about one of those and be a lot more specific about it. And the type of depth we're going to be talking about tonight is um, linear perspective. So let's have a look at this kitchen. Everybody know what the word parallel means? Parallel would be two shapes or lines going in the same direction. They would never run into each other. So when we look at this kitchen, for example, the, the vertical lines on the cabinets are parallel. In fact, all the vertical lines are parallel. All the horizontal lines, like the top of the cabinet here, the top of the door, those are also parallel. But I want you to notice that even though we know the sink and this counter are parallel with this island, the lines are not parallel. They're all going to a point about right here. If you look on the island, they're going to that point. They're all aiming at it. All of the floorboards are going to that point. The top of the refrigerator is going to that point. The cabinets are going to that point. So that's called a vanishing point. We're going to talk a little bit about a little bit more about that tonight. Um, on this drawing, which is an architectural rendering, there's two vanishing points. One is over here. Notice all these lines are going to a point probably right about here. And then there's another one way out here that all these lines are going to. So this is called two-point perspective. So let's start our demo. We're going to start with a drawing of a box. To be a little more accurate, this is called an isometric drawing, I think. So we start with the, the front wall of the box, and then we put in another rectangle for the back wall, and we connect it with these four lines. So these are called height lines. These that are going horizontal and parallel are called width lines. And these that are going diagonally and parallel are called depth lines. So height plus width plus depth equals 3D. I believe this is called an isometric drawing because there's no distortion. All three sets of lines are parallel. Now, when we do something very similar, like a building, and we're going to do it in one point perspective, we start the same way with the front wall. Then, it, then it's going to get different. We're going to put in a line that represents the eye level. I'm going to stop here and go over two little side subjects. Number one, the lines that I'm drawing, I'm using my arm and shoulder like this. I'm not trying to draw them with my wrist and fingers. I can get a nice, straight, smooth line if I use that arm and shoulder movement, okay? It takes a little practice, but it's a better line. And two, I want to talk for just a bit about eye level. Here's a pretty good example of a team of artists using eye level to create a unique perspective. So where is the eye level in this picture? 
Go ahead. Up. It's very high. Why do you think they did that? Why do you think they made the eye level high so it looks like you're looking down at the toys? To make them feel really small. <laughs> yes. <no>. I, <laughs> I, I won't comment on how that may be a reflection of your own personal <laughs> attitude. Um, but that would be your... Um, you're right to interpret it that way. Anybody else have a, a possible reason that we have this perspective? To make Andy look really tall? Yeah, it might be to make the boy feel like he's bigger and he's looking down at them. I guess you can look at it either way. Um, but it does make it a little more dramatic and interesting than if you're just looking straight at him, doesn't it? Let's see if we, I think we have one other. How about this perspective or eye level? Where is it, Kate? Uh, it's like you're looking up. Yeah, so that means the eye level is low, all right? All right, so that's how artists use eye level to create more interesting and dramatic pictures. Um, this exercise is helpful for students who like to create characters and you want to have like a space for your character, a road, a building. Uh, this, these exercises are also very helpful for our students who will eventually be architects, engineers, industrial designers. So we've got the eye level in. It's pretty low. I'm going to pick a spot and put in a, a point and that is going to be known as the depth vanishing point. Our height lines stay the same in one point perspective and our width lines stay the same as they are in the isometric. But all of the depth lines go to that vanishing point. And I want you to notice I'm turning the paper. That's so that I can use this nice... I, I make a decent straight line when I can go across my body like that from left to right. So rather than try to go this and make a line or that and make a line, I'm not that good at that. But if I turn the paper, I can just make a nice straight line. And then all you have to do is decide where you want the other end of your building. And you've got a building in one point perspective. Let's do it again with a very high eye level and see what happens. What's different about this one? Arjun? You can see the top of the roof. That's right, you can see the top, you can see the roof because it's below our eye level, okay? Now let's go inside the building and do a, do a drawing of a room. We start the same way with a wall. I'm gonna put a very low eye level. Now the way we do these guidelines is gonna be a little different here. Same idea, but a little bit different. We have to go from the depth vanishing point through the corner and then straight out. Through the corner and then straight out. So all of these lines have to be pointing towards this. The first part I draw lightly and the second part I draw more dark. And what I want you to see when we zoom in here a little bit is look at these lines. They're almost going straight up because of the low, the low eye level. And these lines where the wall meet the floor 
are almost going straight out to the sides. It, al it already makes you feel like you're very low in the room. Okay, so it already makes you feel you're very low because of the, the placement of the, um, the low eye level. And then these angles tell you visually, hey, I'm down near the floor. Uh, we can quickly put in a door, drop in a height line, drop in a depth line, drop in another height line. We can put in a window, put a height line in, two depth lines, other height line. Notice all the depth lines above the eye level appear to be going down as the room moves away from you and all the depth lines below the eye level appear to be going up as the mo room moves away from you. All right, let's move into two-point perspective. You are gonna pick how far you wanna go with your exercise. If you just wanna stay in one-point perspective, that would be fine, that's the easiest. If you feel confident and you wanna move into two-point perspective, you can try it. In two-point perspective, we start with a corner, not a wall, just a corner. We put in two vanishing points. The one closer to the corner will be the depth vanishing point, and the one further will be the width. So now we're distorting two of the three dimensions. We're not doing anything to height lines. We're leaving them vertical and parallel. And so we put in two guidelines going this way and two guidelines going this way. And then you can randomly decide where you wanna put the other ends of your building. And now you have a building in two point perspective. If you wanna take it a step further I can very lightly put a guideline in from this corner to that vanishing point, from this corner to that vanishing point, from this corner to the width, from this corner to the width. And now we can kind of see through the building to the other walls. We can see underneath the roof and we can see where the building meets the ground known as the footprint. Okay, two-point perspective interior. Again, we start with a corner and an eye level. And now this will be similar to this. We're gonna go lightly till we get to here and then out. That line has to be aiming at that point. Lightly, we go to there and then out. Lightly and then lightly. And that is the corner of a room in two-point perspective. If I want to put in a door, height line, depth line, put in the other side. Okay. Just for the fun of it, I'm also going to show you three points so that you know that there are three parts to it. One point, two point, and three point. I would say by far the most common is two point. Okay. So we've got a vanishing point here, one here, and one way up here. This one can also be way down here. If you're drawing a city, for example, from the perspective of a helicopter looking down on it, this vanishing point would be down here. But if you're walking through a city looking up at the tall buildings, it would be up here. And the drawing would be something like this. Everything is getting distorted now.
All of the height lines are going to this vanishing point. So this is the building. Everything is slightly distorted. And that's the way tall buildings look when you look up at them. So your exercise, everybody, I would like you to do the, the isometric box and one of these two one point drawings, then it's up to you. If you want to try two point, that would be fine. I'll leave this up on the board. Quickly, I want to show you an example of Uh, what you can do with this. This illustration was done by one of our students a few years back. He just graduated from DePaul um, in Chicago, one of the country's leading animation schools. He went there on a full scholarship, by the way. But he used one of our iPads and the, uh, the uh, perspective app in the iPad to do this one-point perspective drawing of some sort of a futuristic, uh, apocalyptic society of some kind. Anyway, he scored really well on his AP with it. Okay, that's it. Let's get started.